Hi everybody, so this is Rachel Webb, teaching and learning consultant for primary science. Um, outside in the lovely outdoors, I'm just here to tell you about two fantastic websites to support the children in your school during the summer term. So the first one is Wild Days by Earthwatch, which is a daily program that comes um, to children in their own homes. Parents will need to register, but it's completely free. Uh, with some outdoor activities linked to the current lockdown guidance um, that parents can access to help with nature and outdoor learning. And the second website is The Great Bug Hunt uh, from School Science. Uh, it's a competition run annually by the Association of Science Education and it's for children to do a bug hunt in their local habitat to find a little bit out about the insects and bugs that they find, um, to do a poster or to um, find some information out about them, to take some pictures, to draw them, to present it basically however they want. And the competition is open to parents and children uh, from home as opposed through uh, school. So that's two fantastic websites that will help your children with some of the outdoor learning that may have been planned for science in the summer. Hello, Andrew here from the maths team again with Imogen, who's going to demonstrate a fantastically easy game for you, Math Pong. Okay, Imogen, off you go. And there all the balls are in, so let's see how much you've scored. With this round, the colours were worth these values. Blacks were worth 100, greens were worth 10, and the blues were worth 1, so we've got 100s, 10s and 1s. Let's have a look Imogen at how many you scored. Let's see how many blacks or 100s you got. So you got 100 there. On to the greens next. And you scored, count with me Imogen, 10, 20, 30, 35, 40. And in the ones, just over here, one. just one. So what have you scored all together? 141. Show us how you write that down. And then show us what it's made up of. Perfect. Well done, Imogen. And that is Matt Pong. Obviously, the scoring system can change. It doesn't have to be hundreds, tens and ones. That's an easy starting point, but it could be score of three and then two and then one for younger children and they're adding up single digit numbers, or it could be fractions and decimals or more complex numbers for older children. Hope you like that idea and enjoy playing it at home. See you later. Quiz time. Highest, highest mountains. What is the highest mountain in England? What is the highest mountain in the UK? What is the highest mountain in Europe? What is the highest mountain in the world? Mystery object. Look at the object. What is the purpose of it? Who might use this? Why is it made from this material? Could you improve it? Where is this place and where was the photograph taken? Hint, it is in England. Think West. Thank you for your time. Answers next time. Answers from quiz one. 
The longest river in England is the Thames. The longest river in the UK is the Severn. The longest river in Europe is the Volga. The longest river in the world is the Nile. The mystery object was an egg separator. The photograph of the place was Reynesfjord Black Sand Beach near Vik in South Iceland. Propagating hydrangeas. My name's Stephen Kenyon and I'm a teaching and learning consultant for Lancashire LPDS. Today we're going to focus on propagating hydrangeas. The word propagate means to actually grow a new plant from a cutting from the parent plant. At the moment, because we're in lockdown, we're unable to go to a garden centre and buy new plants, but actually we don't need to. We can grow plants for free from plants we've already got at home. So today I'm going to take cuttings from this lace cap hydrangea and show you how to grow new plants for free. So spring is a great time to propagate hydrangeas because there's lots of fresh growth and actually yeah. some of these long shoots could do with pruning off anyway. Obviously, we don't need this whole uh, piece uh, for our cutting today. We want basically the green fresh growth. We don't want this old wood. So I'm going to cut off the old wood first of all. And then I'm going to remove some of these branches. Now, I'm not cutting them right to the stem because actually this is a place where new roots will grow. So I'm just going to trim off the excess leaves. I'm also going to take out this soft tip. So I'm left with a couple of leaves. You can also actually cut those leaves in half. Um, you just need a little bit of leaf uh, left on the plant like so on. So I've now got three cuttings, which is perfect for our pot. So I've got some ericaceous compost, which hydrangeas really like. So ideally, I would grow my cuttings in this. Now at the moment, because of the lockdown, we can't get to garden centre, so you might not have any compost. General um, multi-purpose compost is fine. I've actually got a mixture of compost and just normal garden soil here. Nice and moist, lots of water in that. So what I've done, and this could literally be garden soil, is I've got some moist compost and garden soil, and I've made three holes with my knife. So I'm basically preparing the hole before I put the hydrangea in. If you've got rooting powder, you don't have to use this. If you've got rooting powder, that does help the plants to root. So I'm just gonna dip the little cuttings in the rooting powder, gently place them in the hole, not too deep, and just firm them in. So I've got two more. Okay, again with the rooting powder, shake off the excess, place it in the hole again, not too deep, and just firm that into the compost. And so we have our new little hydrangea cutting. Once you've taken your cuttings, you need to place them in a shady spot. If you have them in full sun, uh, they will just wilt and die. So I'm going to put those in a, in a cool, shady place. Within 12 months, they should look something like this. And by June, July, this will be full of those bright pink lace cap flowers. This is a hydrangea I've grown from cutting. It's the same variety. It's about three years old. This is the fully mature plant, probably at least 30 years old. So I hope you've enjoyed the video today and hope you enjoy propagating your own hydrangeas. You can take a cutting of this flowering red currant, like this one. Maybe you're climbing rows like this. You might decide to grow a plant from seed, like these. This is an honesty plant that I grew from seed last year. Hi, it's Nicola Martin. Hope everyone's staying safe and well out there. I just want to share a couple of ideas for spelling with you, which might be useful for schools, parents and children. So the first top tip is when you're practicing spelling is just select six words. That's right, just six, because we don't want to overload the children all at once. OK, so for this week, I've selected six spellings which might be taken from the national curriculum spelling patterns. They might be tricky words, common exception words or ones that the children might be struggling with. On the chart here, which I've created, I've selected my six words and placed them in the first column. So you can see that I've selected because, would, should, could, there and there. Using a grid like this one here means that you can then copy the spellings each day next to the actual spelling that you're practicing. 
to make sure you do them accurately. As the week progresses, you could fold your paper backwards so you can't see the spelling anymore and see if you can write it from memory. Each day, an extra challenge could be to use a dice and a microphone. What you could do is throw your dice and land on a specific number. As you can see, I've got the number two. Look at my second spelling, which is the word wood. Write the word three times so that it's really embedding it in your brain and then create two or three sentences with the word in it, which gives the children an opportunity to practice that word in different contexts. And of course, don't forget, then use your magic microphone to read each sentence out loud. That's it today for today, folks. I hope you found those top tips useful. Um, don't forget, have fun with your spelling and make it sticky.